Section 8 of Birds, Volume 1, Number 6, June 1897, recorded for LibriVox.org by Hanna Panamarenko. The Loggerhead Shrike A rambler in the fields and woodlands during early spring or the latter part of autumn is often surprised at finding insects, grasshoppers, dragonflies, beetles of all kinds, and even larger game, mice and small birds, impaled on twigs and thorns. This is apparently cruel sport, he observes, if he is unacquainted with the butcher bird and his habits, and he at once attributes it to the wanton sport of idle children who have not been led to say with hearts to love with eyes to see with ears to hear their minstrelsy through us no harm by deed or word shall ever come to any bird if he will look about him however the real author of this mischief will soon be detected, as he appears with other unfortunate little creatures, which he requires to sustain his own life and that of his nestlings. The offender he finds to be the shrike of the northern United States, most properly named the butcher bird. Like all triants, he is fierce and brave, only in the presence of creatures weaker than himself, and covers and screams with terror if he sees a falcon. And yet, despite this cruel proceeding, which is an implanted instinct, like that of the dog which buries bones he never seeks again, there are few more useful birds than the shrike. In the summer he lives on insects, 98% of his food for July and August consists of insects, mainly grasshoppers, and in winter, when insects are scarce, mice form a very large portion of his food. The butcher bird has a very agreeable song which is soft and musical, and he often shows cleverness as a mocker of other birds. He has been taught to whistle parts of tunes, and is as readily tamed as any of our domestic songsters. The nest is usually found on the outer limbs of trees, often from 15 to 30 feet from the ground. It is made of long strips of the inner bark of basswood, strengthened on the sides with a few dry twigs, stems and roots, and linked with fine grasses. The eggs are often six in number, of a yellowish or clay white, blotched and marbled with dashes of purple, light brown and pearlish grey, pretty eggs to study. Readers of birds who are interested in eggs do not need to disturb the mothers on their nests in order to see and study them. In all the great museums, specimens of the eggs of nearly all birds are displayed in cases and accurately colored plates have been made and published by Smithsonian Institution and others. The Chicago Academy of Sciences has a fine collection of eggs. Many persons imagine that these institutions engage in cruel slaughter of birds in order to collect eggs and nests. This, of course, is not true only the fewest number being taken and with the exclusive object of placing before the people, not for their amusement, but rather for their instruction. Specimens of birds and animals 
which shall serve their identification in forest and field. The loggerhead shrike and nest shown in this number were taken under the direction of Mr. F. M. Woodruff at Worth, Illinois, about 14 miles from Chicago. The nest was in a corner of an old hedge of Osage Orange and about 8 feet from the ground. He says in the osprey that it took considerable time and patience to build up a platform of fence boards and old boxes to enable the photographer to do his work. The half-eaten body of a young garter snake was found about midway between the upper surface of the nest and the limb above, where it had been hung up for future use. End of section 8 This recording is in the public domain.